Hello again. I'm going to be altering the inside of this box today. This is how it looked before I did the outside. I uh, altered the outside last week, but I want to do the inside in a very similar theme, but, but not exactly, maybe on a smaller scale. You see the box is, is quite quite rough and scruffy inside. And, and although um, this bit on the bottom is really rough, I'm going to be adding texture anyway, so I'm going to leave it like it is. Uh, I'll cover up that mirror so you don't get any glare from the, the lights or anything. So I'm going to start by putting some of these little resin beading pieces from Finnebar's mould. Uh, the mould's called Pieces of the Underworld, I think. I have this little box that I've put together some bits and pieces that I feel are on a similar theme to the bits I've got on the outside. I, d I don't know if I'll use them all. But I'll just um, get on with gluing these bits around the mirror. I'm going to use heavy body gel again uh, because I know it'll keep them nice and secure. And I'm just going to speed up the video whilst that happens. There's no good you watching me gluing. Quite typical, it didn't quite fit. Uh, I don't want to cast a whole string um, just to fit that corner, so I'm going to add just uh, an actual little pearl bead from a jar of broken beads. So I'm just giving it a little dust out to get all the little bits and bobs out of there. And I want to add some extra texture to the base here. The stencil I'm going to use is a dusty attic stencil and it's called Old Tiles I think and I'm going to put modelling paste, Finnebar's modelling paste through the stencil using a silicon palette knife. I'm not being too fussy about how it is. It's so rough on there already that it's not going to be a nice perfect image. I'll just dry the first bit a little bit so that when I add the second piece of stenciling it won't squash the first bit. Okay so that's dry now and I've washed the stencil and I'm thinking about adding some bits and pieces of lace. I'll just cut them up and uh, glue them on sort of around the area where I'd like to have my central image but there's a tear here on the edge uh, I want to strengthen it so I think possibly using some of that lace might be a good idea I'll start with the heavy body gel over the tear because that one will dry the firmest um, nice and strong it might help stop the tear from getting any worse ordinarily I would just use soft gel to glue lace on but in this instance I'll start with the heavy gel that's that on with the heavy gel um, I'll change over now to the soft gel and add another piece of lace and then start applying the lace to the the main composition part in the base of the box this again is Finnebar it's 
gloss gel but you can use soft matte gel soft gloss it just happens to be what i have i'm just going to go over it as if i was decoupaging it's a really decent um soft medium for doing mixed media gluing especially for things like paper and lace and ribbon So as well as the lace, um, I'm adding little strips of paper. Most of these bits of paper are kept from cutting off the bottom of 12 by 12s or there are little bits that are left over from cutting larger pieces of paper. And again, I'm kind of focusing on the area where I want the main composition to be built up. And that's going to be my sort of top left corner, but not too high up into the left. This is very much based on quite a few different classes I've done with Vinabar. Um, Anna, she shows this sort of crisscross pattern that, that helps just pull, pull the eye to go up and down the composition and to look out from the composition. It's a nice way to get started. And even if it all ends up getting covered up in the end, it, it still helps me know where to put my composition. It's um, time for me to start gluing on my elements. I'm using resin pieces again from Pinabar Moulds. I started out thinking that a good plan would be to plan it, see where I wanted things to go, maybe take a photo of it and then start gluing. I really I could take forever if I start doing that um, I'm never quite happy so in the end I thought just just forget that take everything off pick up the glue and start gluing pieces down uh, and, and follow my gut because I know where I want the pieces to roughly be and I know that I just need to keep making sure I balance things so the nice thing also with the heavy body gel is that even if I do put something on and then later think, no, I don't like that, that shouldn't be there, it won't, the glue won't be dry and I can move the pieces around for quite some time. I really love the heavy body gel for that. It, it's not holding anything still until it's dry. So it gives you lots and lots of time to play around and move things. So I'll let you just watch this um, until all the elements are on and we get ready for the next bit. When I did the, the lid, I added some of these little pearly beads that I took from a broken necklace. So I just want to add a few of these little beads to the inside as well to keep it consistent.
So here it is, this is all the pieces um, in place. Next part is the gesso. I'm using Vinda Bar's heavy gesso in white and I'm just going to give it two or three light even coats. I know I've said this before but it is way better than giving it one big thick coat because that tends to go lumpy and bumpy and, and you don't get a nice detailed finish. So I'll give it a, coat, a thin coat, I'll dry it, then I'll give it another coat and dry it and possibly if I'm not happy still I'll, I'll give it a third. But I'll wait and see. is ready for adding colour now. The first colour I want to add, you're never going to be able to read it from that mangy bottle, here's a clean bottle, Burnt Sienna Liquid Acrylic and those are Finnebar paints again. So I'm just going to add a few blobs of colour, spray the water and have the colour flow around. I don't want it too concentrated. I want it to get into all the little cracks. I'm just trying to add a kind of vintage antique type vibe without being too overwhelming. The second colour I want to add is Avocado Green, also liquid acrylic by Finnebar. And the same process, I'll add a few touches of colour uh, of the green and then spray with water. And it won't get muddy because I made sure all the burnt sienna brown was dry before I started this next step. That's it dry now and the next step is rust obviously, it is me after all and I'm using the red rust again, Finnebar's rust effect and I'm applying it in the same way as I applied the paints. I put a little bit on and then I spray it with water so that it flows. Uh, I like some clumpy bits in, in the deepest parts of the corner because it looks like the, the rust has built up. Uh, through time and I'll just go around the whole box adding little rusty touches where I think I want them now I'm going to use some um, metallic paint and this is white pearl Vinnabar's metallic paint I'm going to do some dry brushing just to lift up some highlights. Just give some um, the piece a little bit more detail because some of the details can get lost under all the colour and, and paint and rust. I'm also adding the paint to the pearl effect around the mirror because um, it really does make them look as if they had originally been little beads, pearly beads, rather than resin pieces. I have to say that the irony is not lost on me that I've taken a vintage, bashed, dirty old box to alter it into a vintage old rusty box. Uh, but it's a prettier rusty vintage dirty box now.
So I'm just doing some little paint splatters. I did some with the pearl white first of all and now I'm doing it with Finnebar Sparks paint and that is the unicorn here. And now I'm adding some aged brass metallic wax in places. I'm on the little moths and the butterflies and around some little edge bits and I think I'll also put this on the fixings that keep it closed because they're all covered in white jet so at the minute just make them look metal again and really um, after that it, it, it's just finishing touches I want to make the edges match up with the rest of the box so I'll go back to my rust paste add it on, spray some water and dry it and then that should be it done. So that's the outside and the inside of the box finished now. Thanks for watching the video, uh, I, I hope you found it useful, bye!